Hey guys, welcome to another video and a couple of days back we made a video about K20 Pro having MIA 13 with Android 12 that is Abix ROG edition and in today's video we're gonna look at the complete review. I've been using it for around 48 hours, we have the benchmarks and the other things ready. So before we get into the details, if you haven't already, please subscribe because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this. Now without further ado, hello awesome people, welcome to Phone Ops. my name is Kailash, let's get going. So exciting stuff for you K20 Pro users out there, right? Android 12 with MIUI 13. Well, everything is not as rosy. This for me, according to me, is still not a daily driver. And you will see that towards, uh, you know, by the end of this video, there are a few things that are missing. And hopefully once the Abix sim or somebody else fixes it, we can have a better version. First things first, let's go to the about section and all specifications. So what we have over here is Redmi K20 Pro 6 plus 2 GB. That means RAM extension is working. All the specifications are displayed over here. The security patch surprisingly is the 1st of February 2022 because this is of course a ported ROM. Now the MIA versions mentioned over here is MIA 13 stable and the kernel of course is Perf kernel. Now the first and the most prominent thing that you will notice over here is this round dot over here. Now this device comes with a full screen display which means it has a pop-up camera so there is no punch hole display or punch hole camera in this particular device but because this ROM is ported from another device this round icon over here is present so that is one sole point here. Another thing is if you want to raise or you know lower the camera you have to use this third party application as you can see and every time you want to click a picture you have to actually go ahead and use it. Now what they do recommend though is you launch this application and lock it in memory. Even after that I haven't been able to you know get the pop-up camera of the front uh, camera working absolutely fine. Although the back cameras in the camera application are working absolutely okay including the wide angle, the 2x telephoto lens and stuff like that. Now one good thing about this particular ROM is although this is Android 12 with MIUI 13 the smoothness is definitely there. Now another thing to note over here is if you actually go to the display section you will see that it has a refresh rate toggle options between 60 and 120 hertz but let me tell you this this is no overclocked display we are still running at 60 hertz so that is again a placebo or a mistake or something that they haven't fixed so 120 hertz the camera not popping up this punch hole cutout type of a look over here these are the three main things which will probably stop you from using this as a daily driver but apart from this if you ask me the general smoothness of this rom is pretty rock solid there are no random reboots the voice calls work absolutely fine i've not had any issues with network connectivity or you know making calls receiving text messages wi-fi mobile data all these things are present and they're working absolutely fine now one more thing to mention though is that this device comes pre-rooted. This ROM specifically comes pre-rooted to allow this particular application to work. Now what that means is this breaks safety net. I did try a few banking applications and they refuse to work. So you will have to go ahead and do the Zygisk hide thing and follow those steps to ensure that your banking applications work fine. So there is some extra work that needs to be done if you wish to use it as a daily driver. On a positive note, it comes pre-rooted, so you don't need to worry about the hassle of rooting the device in case you are someone who needs root access all the time. Now to the left, of course, you have options of using the app vault or Google feed. And as you can see over here, it's rock solid smooth. That is a good thing about this ROM. The smoothness is there. So as I said, you know, these three or four things that I mentioned, if they can go ahead and get around them and fix them and give a safety net in Wido and L1, we should be pretty good to go. Apart from this, installing applications from Play Store works just fine. I did run the benchmarks and we will share the numbers. I did try a couple of games and the experience has been just fine. It is not something which is so good that I would like to make a gaming review or probably do a gaming live stream. Not really. Maybe a couple of builds later, this particular ROM will be much, much better. Now, apart from this, if you ask me, are there any other additions or any other goodies? Goodies, as far as they are concerned, MIA 13 goodies are definitely present. If you look at the control center over here, you have the complete MIA 13 look. Even if you look at the wallpaper, you have the molten glass wallpaper. 
if we actually talk about the fingerprint scanner it works most of the time but remember i have enrolled my finger three to four times the same thumb is what i've enrolled to get the best fingerprint recognition another thing to note here is that always on display is present and it works absolutely fine so let's go ahead and unlock the phone and also have a look at the wallpapers because mia 13 wallpapers is something that a lot of people have liked so the molten glass wallpapers are definitely present they will download and once you go ahead and download and apply them they should be working just fine at the same time you do have a lot of super light wallpapers which are present and they work absolutely okay as well now even in this rom although this is android 12 with mii 13 i don't really see a lot of monet customization only in google applications is where you will see the monet customization now talking about the charging speeds the charging speeds are just fine the 27 watt charger on this particular rom works absolutely okay no problems there whatsoever if you then go to the battery section, you will also notice that the performance and battery toggle is still missing. But on a positive note, the battery backup on this ROM is pretty decent. It can easily get you through a day. But remember the point that this is a K20 Pro, which is three to four, two to three years old, and batteries by now would have aged. So you will not have the maximum capacity of battery available. So keep in mind when you judge a ROM on its battery backup. Apart from this, other MIA 13 features, like if you go to special features, you have the sidebar, which is a combination of the game turbo and the video toolbox. They are present and that works absolutely fine. Basically, almost all MIA 13 features are present and they work absolutely okay. So no problems there whatsoever. Even if you go to features like additional features or you go to the more section over here, you will have things like gesture shortcuts, like take a screenshot with three fingers. Those features are available. Scrolling sheet screenshots works absolutely fine. Memory extension is present and the one handed mode, the one adapted from Android 12 is present and works absolutely fine. So, you know, not to discredit the hard work done by Abik's ROG team in bringing Android 12 with MIA 13 to this particular device. A lot of things are going right. The smoothness is there. It can definitely be used as a daily driver from that point of view. But the bigger points which are making a difference and stopping me from recommending you this ROM as a daily driver are still present and maybe they will fix it in the future. Talking about gaming, we do have the not so latest game turbo. It is available and it works absolutely fine. So no major issues there. Apart from this, let's quickly go ahead and have a look at the benchmark numbers in which the first app that we will look at is Antutu Benchmark. Now the number that we achieved in Antutu is 527,950, which is a pretty standard. It's say about 5,000 points less than what you would get on MIA 12.5 stable. Apart from this, let's actually go to gallery here, which is the updated gallery that you get with this particular ROM. So let's go ahead and look at the throttling score. CPU throttled to 91% of its max performance and the average score was 173 980 GIPS with a max score of 183 524 GIPS. Now let's go to Geekbench and look at the single and multi-core score. So 739 single core and 2649 multi-core. Now we've seen better numbers than this in ROMs like Siberia, but for a MIUI port ROM, this is pretty decent. So my verdict, if you ask me, well, you can definitely give it a try if you want to have the feel of Android 12 with MIA 13 on your aging K20 Pro. If you can, you know, get around these minus points that I mentioned, this is definitely a good ROM. It can be used as a daily driver, but keep in mind all those things that I mentioned. All in all, a step in the right direction, and I definitely expect to have stable MIUI ported to this particular device. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about this video. Until the next one, this is Kalash signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.